in last video in last class we had discussed about the major structure or major location and distance of karnataka so this one we had discussed in last video so in this class we are discussing about in karnataka we can see some of the features some of the physical features that are the special features because of in first lesson we already discussed our karnataka this is a blessing of heritage and we can see one of the important place based on culture or architectures or based on literature or natural beauty this is one of the prestige for us so that's why we want to know how this state or prestige are one of the national one of the heritage place so because of we want to know how means based on physical feature we can see in karnataka some of the physical features already we have discussed in last class so karnataka located in southern part of india and in that also western side of central land we are located or our state is located and we have discussed this region is part of peninsula of india this also we have discussed already this place located in peninsula of india so in that part in we can see by this karnataka and in this karnataka state we can identify some of the physical features so especially we can see southern part we can see undulating photography so that like a features we can see and northern part is vast plain so we can see one of the flat land we can see in northern part but when you are discussing about southern part we cannot see that like a flat lands so these like of structures we can see in karnataka and not only this one when we are comparing coastal areas and malnad regions we can see so much of variations because of land slopes and the height of the land height above the sea level so in that based we can some of the difference in including coastal line and malnad regions so these like here they saying the land slopes we can see in east side steeply towards in west side in east side of part in that coastal regions are slopes but when you are seeing in west part in western side of coastal lines so on that side we can see that steeply as that is one of the so much of steep areas deep areas we can see in west coastal line so this like here our karnataka region one of the important physical features we can see so this like we can identify and not only this one we can see who are the interested about to travel in that regions so they are traveling in that one Uh, valleys or the gorges so in that place in they are traveling and we can see most of the areas of uh, in our state they have 450 to 900 meters above the sea level so average height of our karnataka land surface that is 450 to 900 meters so that much of height sea levels we can see and second one we want to know and some of the areas in our karnataka that have 1800 that much of meters above the sea level so that much of height of mountains also we can see in india i know we want to know based on this lack like of content or this lack like of knowledge based we can see karnataka have some of the special physical features because that we are told that only in southern part land structure of southern part and northern part that is very different and when you are comparing coastal line in malnad malnad region the areas are the structure are very different so on that based and we are discussed some of the area have 450 to 900 meters of sea level that much of height of more areas we can see and some of the areas we can see 1800 meters that much of height mountains also we can see in karnataka so on that based this take like of relief features in karnataka majorly we can see there are three types of physical features in karnataka based on the structures of and relief features we can see karnataka they have three types of physical features or we can divide it as a three important physical division or physical features so one is here they saying the coastal plain and second one here they saying by the malnad region and third one the maidan region so these are the three important physical structures we can see in karnataka one is coastal line second one malnad region third one maidan region and when we are discussing about each physical features we can identify some of the different features of in each physical structure we are getting some of the extra information so we are not getting same temperature a same climate a same physical conditions we cannot see in each divisions we can see some of the difference 
so on that based we we are divided in our karnataka as a three types of physical divisions so that means in this class now we want to discuss one by one so where this one located by the coastline or maidan region and another we want to discuss about malnad region and what was the places they have historical places or tourist place and why this region are very special in our karnataka in phys- based on physical division so these are the matters now we want to discuss so in that first one we want to know that is the coastal plain so this is a, one of the important physical feature in india sorry in karnataka in beginning stage when we got the independence in 1947 this coastal region could not merge with mysore state or karnataka so after that when in 1956 the state reorganization commission or linguistic based on state formation committee when they formed so on that based in this areas peoples that most of the peoples they are speaking kannada so that's why this coastal region that means this one mangalore so this one on the time this one like controlled by madras region so when this one report given by state reorganization committee so on that based this coastal region came under the part of karnataka after 1956 and here they say this region located between arabian sea and malnad region so in that between places we can see as a coastal plain in karnataka we can see one of the important physical feature that is coastal line this coastal line located between arabian sea in west side and east side we can see malnad region so in that both place between the place we can call it as a coastal line that like they say and this line here they say this coastal line extended by totally 320 kilometers the total length of coastal line in karnataka that is 320 kilometers and this start from mangalore to south in mangalore to till karwar in here they say by north south mangalore to till north in karwar so this much of length we can see by our state coastal line total length that is 320 20 and now we want to know the width now we have discussed about length so now we want to discuss about width how much of width we can say as a coastal line so here they saying this is various region to regions we can see different types of width of coastal line so here they saying 12 km to till 64 km this much of width we can see by our karnataka's coastal line and this is a south here they saying south in we can say as a broad and becoming narrow in the side of here the same by north in south side so when you are discussing about mangalore side or mangalore region so in that region here the same way the coastal region are broad we can see very wide so but when you are going to north side that means near the karwar so when you are reaching near the karwar the size or the width of the coastal region are very narrow that is very small so that like they say and here in this region average height of sea level that is 200 meters here coastal region the average sea level here they say by here they say by 200 meters sorry 200 meters that much of sea level we can see and in this region this coastal region for they given another name also that is given by british so that name is kenara sometimes this coastal line they are calling as a kanara and sometimes we can call as a the karnataka coastal line so this like we are given different names and here is saying in this regions we can see some of the flowing rivers also in that coastal region we can see fast flowing rivers also we can see and not only this one here this rivers go and merging with flowing and merging with oceans so where there the merging with oceans in that place we can see some of the soil erosions the most of the problems we can see in that coastal region that is the soil erosion and here they say here if they merging with the, the coastal regions but we cannot see here deltas so deltas means some of the flowing rivers they bringing the soils and they keeping in coastal region side that only we can called as a deltas but we can cannot see this like of deltas in in karnataka coast line why because of here rivers are going very fast so that's why and the length that is not a that much of long here which are the rivers flowing in west side or which are the rivers flowing in coastal region side so these are the rivers that length is not a that much of long and this rivers are going flowing very fast so that's why we cannot see in that region in deltas 
बट इयर इन कर्नाटक कोस्ट लाइन आर कैनरा आर कोस्टल प्लेन वी कैन सी सम ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट पोर्ट्स सो विच आर द इंपॉर्टेंट पोर्ट्स वी कैन सी इयर इज ए न्यू मैंगलोर दिस इज वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट एंड मेजर पोर्ट इन कर्नाटक एंड नॉट ओनली दिस वन वी कैन सी सम अदर पोर्ट ऑल्सो इयर इज सेइंग बटकाला मलपे कारवार कुमटा बेलकेरे एंड वन आवरा सो दीज आर द इंपॉर्टेंट कोस्ट वी कैन सॉरी इंपॉर्टेंट पोर्ट्स वी कैन सी इन कर्नाटक कोस्टल लाइन एंड सेकेंड वन इयर वी कैन सम ऑफ द ब्यूटिफुल बीचस एंड वी कैन सी सी कोस्ट सो दिस वन वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट सो सो मच ऑफ पीपल्स टूरिस्ट दीज आर द प्लेस इज अट्रैक्टिंग सो सो मच ऑफ पीपल दे विजिटिंग दीज आर द बीचस एंड इयर दे सेंग सम ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट बीचस इन कर्नाटक सो दट इज वन इज पणबूर सेकेंड वन उल्ला एंड थर्ड वन इयर दिग्वन सोमेश्वर बीच this one in new mangalur after that malpe near udupi karwar so these are the important and not only this one we can see murudeshwara this one in one hour and maravante this one is om beach near gokarna so these are the important beaches peoples they are attracted this is the beauty of our coastal line and next one we can see here in karnataka we can see islands also some small islands also we can see so one of the important island in coastal line that is saint mary's island this one they given name as a coconut island also this one near in malpe and another one we can see anja near karwar and another one is devgad not only this one we can some others also here they given kanji gudda islands these are the important islands we can see in Karnataka coastline. So, in that most important island, that is Saint Mary's Island. This is one of the important, most attracted place in our Karnataka coastline. And next one here. Now we are discussed about that means the structure, and we are discussed the important ports and beaches, and we are discussed some of the islands in coastline. Next one, now we want to know the peoples which are the occupation they are doing in that particular place. So here they say most of the peoples in that region, in that coastal region, are doing work as a fishing, and some of the peoples they are doing work as a agriculture. So which are the agriculture work or which are the crops they are growing, especially in that region, peoples here they say cashew, coconut, arkanet, cardamom, and paddy. So these are the important crops growing in Karnataka coastline peoples. And now we want to know next one point. So which are the districts? Covered by this coastline, or which are the areas, which are the districts we can call as a Karnataka coastal line. So that only now we want to know. So here they are saying the district of Dakshin Kannada, Udupi, and Uttar Kannada. So these are the important districts. These only three districts have by coastal districts of Karnataka. This only we are called as a the Karnataka coastline. The district of Dakshin Kannada, Udupi, and Uttar Kannada. So this like this is one of the important structure in Karnataka, and we can see some of the special features and special important places also we can identify in the place of the coastal plain. So after the coastal plain, next second one important place or important physical feature in Karnataka. So that is here they given the Malnad region, and this Malnad region, this one place is Western Ghats. So this Western Ghats only we are given name as a Malnad region. The part of Western Ghats of in Karnataka, this region for we are given name as a Malnad, and we are given another name also. This one Western Ghats for that is Sayadri. And here we can see the parallel mountains in this Western Ghats. This parallel mountains. Passing towards north to south, so this like a parallel mountains we can see in the region of Western Ghats or in the Malnad region. And here we want to know here they are saying the structure of the Malnad region. So in that Western Ghats here they are saying the steep terrace in western side that is step step that like of slopes we can see in western side and east part we can see the same by gentle slopes we cannot see that much of slopes. That is normal slopes. So these like of structures we can see in Malnad region. And here they saying the total length of Western Ghats are the Malnad region in Karnataka. Here they saying by six hundred and fifty kilometers. The length of Malnad region here they saying by six hundred and fifty kilometers and width here they saying fifty to seventy six kilometers. The width of Malnad region fifty to seventy six kilometers. And average height of in this region that is nine hundred to one thousand five hundred meters. 
here the land surface height of the surface in this mulnar region here they say the height of the surface is 900 to 1500 meters that much of sea level we can see and these mountains are rain bearing mountains because of in arabian sea so when the temperature is increased so after that the some of the relief features based on the relief features the rain bearing winds is coming through in western gods so on that purpose here in that regions they are receiving highest rainfall in overall in southern part or in this region receiving highest rainfall in karnataka here they say more than 200 centimeters so that much of average rainfall receiving in this malnad regions so that like they saying and we can some of the highest peaks also we can see in this region so some of the important peaks here they given one is mullayanagiri second one kudremukh next one here they given kalahatagiri and next one rudragiri and devaramana gudda so these are the important peaks located in in a single district that is chikmangalur these all these peaks we can see in only one district that is in Chikmangalur. And not only these are the important mountains, we can see some other mountains also. So here they given Balarayana Durga and another near the given Merti Gudda and Pushpagiri and Kodachadri. So these are the important other mountains also we can see in Malnad region. And in this, all the mountains are peaks in one of the important and highest height peaks in Karnataka, that is Mullayanagiri. The total height is on Mullayanagiri, they are saying by 1913 meters. So, that much of height mountains we have in the place of Malnad region. And we want to pass here eastern side to western, means in Malnad region to here we want to know, we want to go for western coastal line or west part. This one we have already knowing that is coastal line. So, in that past we can some of the plains or we can some of the mountains we have middle in mountains so in that mountains we want to pass so this one route for only we are given name as a mountain passes we want to across we want to go to coastal line we want to cross a western grass so without cross a western gods we cannot go the region of coastal region so in that passes for only they give a name as a mountain passes so there are four important passes we can see in Karnataka. So one is here they say Charmadi Ghat. This is one of the important pass in Karnataka, passes in Karnataka, routes in Karnataka to link between coastal region to other places of our Karnataka region. So in that first one here they given Charmadi Ghat. This one link between Mangalore to Chikmangalore. And second one Shiradi Ghat. This one links between Asan, Sakleshpur and Mangalore. And third one here they given Agumbe Ghat, this one Shumoga and Udupi. And third one here they given Hulikal Ghat, this one links between Shumoga and Kundapur. So these are the important four guards or four passes they giving link between coastal regions. So these are the important pass. With this pass only we want to go to coastal regions. So that like they say. And already we have discussed in this mountain they receiving highest rainfall. So on that base we can see some of the attractive hill stations we can see in the region of Malnad region and dense forest, thick forest we can see in this region and always in this forest have a green forest. Throughout here we can see the forest are green. So this lake of stretches forest we can see and already we have discussed here we can see normally mountains so some slopes areas fast flowing rivers also we can see so on that base some of the water bodies created as a waterfalls so some of the important waterfalls in Malnad region here first one they are saying by Jog Falls this one river of Sharabati river this is the highest height waterfalls in India and next one here they are saying some other important falls here they are given Unchalli, Magod, Gokak, Shivana Samudra and Abbe Falls so these are the important falls we can see and some of the valleys we can some of the rivers flowing in the place of valleys and Gorgis. So, Gorgis. So, here also we can see and not only this one, here important crops of in this region that is here they can one is coffee, tea, rubber and spices. So, these are the important crops growing in the mountain slopes. So, in that region they are growing. And 
here we can see here in that region coffee most of the peoples they growing in chikmagalur that is coffee so that's why they give a name as a the land of coffee chikmagalur for they call it as a the land of coffee and kodagu district here they say this is one of the coolest weather in karnataka we cannot see that much of coolest place in any other regions or any other district in karnataka so that's why they give a name as a kashmir of karnataka and not only this one here in kodagu most of the people they growing the fruit of orange most of the people they growing the fruit of orange so that's why in this in this in that land this one kodagu region for they given another name that is land of orange and this malnad region one of the important place in karnataka because of this like of natural beauties we cannot see in any other areas in our karnataka karnataka state so that's why this one area they called as a biodiversity zone because of here what we are seeing wildlife or natural beauties forest or any other environment we cannot see in any other area so that's why this one they called as a biodiversity zone and finally now we want to know which are the districts are there in malnad region so here they are saying first one is asan next one kodagu after that shivamogga and chikmagaluru so these are the important regions of malnad region chikmagalur asan kodagu shivamogga so these are only important places in malnad region so now if you comparing malnad region and the coastal region we cannot get same information they are, we, we can see there is structure based on structure or based on the natural beauty or the people lifestyle are very different and crops and occupations also we can see very different so these like the physical structures we can see in karnataka as a different physical structure so after the malnad region next one point we want to know next last one physical feature in karnataka so that is here they given the maidan region in this maidan region some of the different part or different land structures we can see in maidan region so here they saying in east part of malnad this one is vast plain area means this one is flat land big surface of flat lands we can see in east malnad regions and here they saying approximately here the above the sea level of it here they saying 450 to 760 meters this is average height of land surface we can see in malnad region and next one here the most of the peoples they growing means they doing work as a agriculture work so based on irrigation so which are the important rivers based they are doing as a irrigation so here they saying the most of the peoples they followed by the river of krishna and tungabhadra and kaveri so in that place peoples they growing their crops based on this water based on irrigation water they use, they producing their crops and next one here they saying here the land is sloping east side in east part of in maidan regions are slopes area so when you are coming in south and north side south and north side when you are growing in the region the areas are here they are saying that height that is rising of height so these like of structures we can see in maidan regions so based on these structures so this maidan region they divided as a two part so one is here they given the north maidan second one the southern maidan first one based on these of the structure because of east side the area structure is slope so when you are coming south and north so the structure is like a rising structure so in that based this region physical feature they divided as a two part one is the northern maidan second one is southern maidan so now we want to know in that in first one the northern maidan so this is very vast plain area this is one of the flat land in our karnataka region that is northern maidan so here most of the land surface located by black soil in that region most of the area that is covered by black soil and here they saying this region have 365 to 610 meters above the sea level this land structure they have height of 365 to 610 meters above the sea level and here also in the region also we can see some of the hills and hillocks mountains and hills both also we can see in the region of northern maidans and here they given some of the important hill stations so one is here they given nargunda and second one parasagada gudda and next one here they given gurum mitkal gudda and ilkal gudda so these are the important place and limestones also we are getting in that region so first one here they given saudati and badami 
so in that both place in we can see the limestones and next one here they saying here most important waterfalls as we can see northern maidan so one is here they given gokak this is 62 meters that much of height and this one created by the river of ghata prabha so this is one of the important falls we can see in the region in northern maidan and not only this one falls we can see some other falls also here they given chaya bhagavati and sogala so these are some important waterfalls we can see in northern maidan and next one we want to know so which are the important districts have in northern maidan so here they given some important districts one is bidar vijayapur kalburgi yadgiri gadag koppad raichur ballari aveeri bagalkote so and some part of darwad and belagavi so including these districts we can called as a northern maidans and next one point we want to know in the region in summer region summer time this region expressing by very hot temperature and they receive very hot temperature so that's why in that land this maidan northern maidan region for they called another name that is the land of sunshine because of here summer season this region receiving very hot temperature and here most of the people they growing dry crops so which are the dry crops growing in that region so first one here they given johar next one bajra and groundnut cotton and pulses so these are the important crops growing in northern maidan so now we understood that means where this one northern maidan located and why this one is different because of in that region is fully black soil and the structure above the sea level also very different and we can some of the hill stations and hill locks also we can see and some of the falls and the crops most of the people they growing only dry crops so after this one and we are discussed another one in in karnataka region here the northern maidan this region expressing by very high temperature in summer season so that's why we called as a the land of sunshine so after that next one part in Ma maidan region so that is here they given the southern maidan so here they say this southern maidan started from tungabhadra river to till chamrajnagar Cham, sorry chamrajnagar in south so till much this much of areas we can call as a southern maidan so when you are comparing to northern maidan and southern maidan the structure and the climate condition both also very different so what we discuss northern maidan this one we can see in north karnataka so what we dis now what we are discussing about southern maidan this one we can see in south karnataka so here that only they saying this region start from tungabhadra river to till chamrajnagar district in south and here they saying so what we discussed in northern maidan the most of the part are black soil so when we are discussing here in southern maidan most of the part of soil is red we can see here red soil and next one here is saying we and that is very fast plains area vast plains area means land surface is flatted land surface we can see in northern maidan but here in southern part we cannot see that like a flat land surface here some of the up and downs so that like of stretches so we can see here in southern part of maidan and this land surface we not distributed equally this is uneven distributed we can see in southern part and above the sea level here they saying 900 to 975 here the height of the land surface here they saying by 900 to 975 meters that much of sea level height we can land surface we can see southern maidan and next one here they saying so when you are comparing to northern maidan so here they saying this land have high level of land surface and we can see this land surface slopes here to east side so this land surface southern land surface they have slopes in eastern side and when you are comparing to southern it's sorry when you are comparing to northern maidan and southern maidan this southern maidan they have highest height land surface so that like they saying and here also we can some of the hills so important hills here they saying chitradurga hills narayana durga next one savana durga and shivaganga in bangalore rural district so these are the important and another one madugiri hills this one in Tum tumkuru district this one of the important biggest monolithic hills in means in single rock in we can see this one hill this one mountains 
that one we can see in tumkur that is madugiri and we can see this is one of the biggest monolithical in in, in monolithical in in asia this madugiri hill so this is one of the biggest monolithic means single rock in mountain so this one we can see asian hill one of the biggest hill so that like they saying and nandi hills and chanakeshwar hill and kavale durga hill and another near the given shankar giri hill this one in ariyareshwar hill in chikkabellapur district and adi junchana giri hill in mandya district and biligiri giri biligiri rangana hill and male madeshwar hill immadi gopaleshwar hill in chamrajnagar district and chamundi hill in mysore district so these are the important hill stations we can see in southern maidan region and this region we are saying by rain shadow area we are discussed the my sorry we are discussed in malnad region so that regions are rain bearing regions so here the southern part of maidan region this one they give a name as a the rain shadow region of western ghats because of what they getting when they malnad regions they getting heavy rain so the feelings they receiving by this southern part of maidan region the cold winds other temperature sometimes is reducing because of when the western ghats they receiving heavy rain for so on that based we can see the some of the temperature changes we can see in the region of southern part so that's why here they given rain shadow area of western ghats the region of southern maidan so after that we can see some of the important rivers also in that region so which are the important rivers we can see here they saying kaveri pala and penna so these are the important rivers we can see in southern maidan and the most of the vipas they growing in the region that is crops here they saying ragi paddy sugarcane groundnut and mulberry and vegetables and some of the variety fruits and flowers also growing in the regions in southern part of maidan and next one which are the districts are there in southern part of maidan here they saying davanagere chitradurga tumkur kolar mandya mysore and chamrajnagar so these are the important regions we can call it as a southern part of sorry southern maidan so these like maidan regions we can see in, in karnataka but based on structure or based on climate condition or based on physical feature in that maidan region they divided as a two part one is northern maidan second one is southern maidan so when we are discussed both part we are discussed or we get some of the different information in northern maidan we are discussed black soil southern maidan red soil and they are growing dry crops but here they are growing some of the irrigation based crops and fruits and vegetables also they are growing in in this of southern maidan and we are discussed they very out temperature in northern maidan here rain shadow areas of western ghats which one southern part and we are discussed there also we are discussed hill stations but when you discussed about the height about the sea level this southern maidan they have more height so when you are comparing to northern maidan so these lights we can see some of the important physical features these only important physical features in karnataka one is we are discussed about coastal region second one we are discussed about malnad region and third one maidan region in that maidan region we are discussed as a two part one is northern maidan second one is southern maidan so these are the important points of karnataka physical features so next class we can discuss about next another important topic